In 1992, Depaios Neuhan presented this rexus fixation where the haptics in the sulcus and the optic pushed through the CCC to be used in the event of posterior capsule tears where in-bag fixation would not be feasible or safe. This is a technique I call reverse rexus fixation to be used in the event that a posterior capsule tear occurs after the lens is in the bag where the optic is pulled out of the bag to be fixed by the anterior capsule rexus. Used in the event of posterior capsule tears but I've also used it to fixate toric IOLs in bags that are so large that the lens is unstable. In pediatric eyes, we like to use posterior optic capture. I like the technique of sulcus placement of the haptics pushed through the anterior and posterior capsular rexus as published by uh, Brian DeBroff, but a one-piece lens, if that's all avail that's available, can be put in the bag and then the optic pushed through the posterior capsular rexus. Posterior capsular rexus with posterior optic capture can be used when the lens is in the bag, but there's anterior capsule tears making long-term centration and fixation of the lens uncertain, but the posterior capsular rexus with optic capture will make sure that lens is stable and central permanently. If a large anterior capsule tear is present, making in-bag fixation uh, unsafe, especially with a three-piece lens, a posterior capsular rexus of the appropriate size can be made and the lens put in the sulcus, the optic pushed through that anterior capsule opening and then through the posterior capsule for capsule fixation and certain centration and fixation. To manage loose sulcus IOLs, I make an opening in the membrane, if there's not one there already, to be able to use optic capture Sometimes there's a PC opening that one has to enlarge appropriately to achieve optic capture. This can be done with a vitrector. Sometimes loose sulcus lenses present with quite a large opening in the membrane. It does not take much even just little leaflets on each side. You can see that's not a tight optic capture. But without vitreous pushing the lens forward or large Sommering's ring, this is often enough to stabilize a sulcus lens. This case illustrates a patient referred to me a few days after surgery where the surgeon thought that the lens would be stable in the bag in spite of a posterior capsule tear, but the tear extended and the bag and the lens started to uh, go into the vitreous. So I was able to just lift the optic up through the anterior capsular rexus, which fortunately was smaller than the optic, and achieve capsule fixation. No vitreous presented. When vitreoretinal retinal surgeons have to manage posterior dislocated lenses, if the membrane has an opening appropriate for capture or can be made appropriate, the optic can be pushed up through for membrane optic capture rather than to use scleral fixation or anterior chamber lens in these situations.
This animation illustrates that retinal surgeons can also use membrane optic capture if the opening in the membrane is the appropriate size or can be made to the appropriate size. Rather than removing these lenses or, or trying to fixate them to the sclera or to remove them and use an anterior chamber lens. So this is membrane optic capture. <laughs> 